All right, in this video, we're gonna take the schema that we created in the notepad file and actually create a database. And there's a few different ways you can do this, but I think the easiest way is to use phpMyAdmin. Um, and I think that's a good way to, to start this if you don't have much experience in MySQL. Uh, so I'm gonna open the, the notepad file that we created, which just has our, our tables and fields. Um, just stored in the notepad file. So uh, I'm going to open up my browser. All right, now you want to make sure that you have XAMPP running or whatever you're using for your server. Okay, so I have MySQL is, is running. And I can now go to localhost slash PHP my admin. And let me log in here. All right, so you can see we have our users database we created. Um, we're gonna create a new database and I'm just gonna call this store. All right, so now if we click on store, uh, we can create our table. Now, if we look at our, I'm on a very uh, low resolution, so I apologize if we can't squeeze all this in. Uh, so we have our products table. That's what we wanna create first. And let's count what we have for fields. One, two, three, four, five, six fields or columns. Okay, now I'm gonna stretch this out a little. So first thing is our ID, all right? And that's gonna be an integer. So we're gonna leave this at int. The length we said was, what, 11, all right? So we'll say 11. And this is also gonna be auto increment and it's gonna be our primary key. All right, so if we go down here and we scroll to the right, under index, you wanna choose primary, and then AI is for auto increment, you wanna click that, all right? So you should only have one primary key in your table. Next thing we're gonna have is a name, the product name, and that's going to be a varkar, all right? And I'm gonna just say 100. And that's fine, we don't need, it's not gonna auto increment, it's not gonna have an index, it's fine just as is, all right? So next we'll have a description, and that's gonna be a text field, all right? And text, we don't need to define a length of values, it's just, it's a, it's a variable. All right, after description, we'll have our price, which we'll set as a var car as well, with, uh, let's say, 20, characters. Um, actually, I'll put 30 just in case. And category, which will be uh, a foreign key, and I'll show you, we'll, we'll do our, our relationships probably in the next video if we don't get to it in this one. And that's going to be an int as well, and it's going to be 11 characters max. And then we'll have an image all right, so image will be varkar, and we'll say, um, we'll just say 150. Now, I didn't have this in the in the notepad file, but we should actually put a date in here um, for when our products were entered. So what we can do is, is up here, it says add one columns, okay? So you can add however many columns, and it's not gonna delete our data. So I'm just gonna click go. Click go again, all right, so now we have an, an extra field here. So this is gonna be, um, I'll just call it create date. And this, like our other date fields, it's gonna be a timestamp. So under date and time, timestamp, and this is the default, all right, so we can choose different default values. We could have it be null, which is means basically it's nothing. We could define it here, all right? But what we're gonna do is choose current timestamp, and that's gonna choose the date and time that, that each product is entered. All right, so after we have that all set, we can say save. Now we have our first row, all right? If we click browse, we're not gonna see anything because we, we don't have any data yet. But if we click structure, you can see we have our structure, um, our auto increment primary key, all right, so now let's create our product categories table. 
and that's going to have four fields, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so ID, we're going to do the same thing. 11, it's going to be auto increment, and it's going to be primary. Then we'll have the name, uh, the name, the description, and an image, which will just be the image path. All right, so that's going to be varkar of name, we'll say it can be 100. Description is going to be a text image will be varkar 100 or well, 150 okay so we want to click save okay now we get our customers table and this will have one two three four five six seven are we missing something here password avatar all right Seven ID All right, so customer will have a first name. I'm just going to write in all the fields first. First name, last name, email, password, avatar, and join date okay so we did the ID this is going to be varkar avatar image and that'll be timestamp all right and we can just fill these in here 100 for email I'll do 150 image I'll do 150 and then join date is going to have a default of current timestamp all right so this is easy enough it's very easy to create these tables um, next we'll have customer address addresses which will have one, two three four five six seven fields And let's see, we're going to have um, customer, which is going to be a foreign key. You don't define your foreign keys here. We'll actually, um, we're going to do that after. We'll do that in the next video. So customer, and we're going to have an address, address to city, state, zip code. So zip code, you, you may think you should use an int, but you should only use int if it's a value that, that can be added or, or something like that. Um, zip code, though, I, I'll usually use a varkar. Actually, for the address, let's use 200. City, we'll use 100. 100, 100. All right. Reviews. Seven again. And you can see that this gets a little tedious after a while. If you're creating a, a really big data structure, it gets quite tedious. A lot of repetitive motions. All right, so ID. Uh, reviews also have a title, a body, rating, customer foreign key field, product, and review date. Rating is going to be Rating can be an int, and we're going to give it two because it, it's not going to be more than ten. Customer, that's fine. That's 
11 11 review date is going to be a timestamp with the current timestamp um, title 100 all right that looks good now we need pages Four, five, eleven ID, okay. They'll have a title, they'll have a body a category, and a create date. Category will be int. Whoop. Create date. Timestamp. Default. All right, and we have one more table, which is going to be uh, page categories, which has four fields. Say name, description, and image. Whoop. All right. All right, that wasn't too painful. So now we have our entire database structure. So we'll stop here, and next what we'll do is we'll add the relationships. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to create a quick video showing you how to back up your database. I'm going to show you how to export it, how to back it up, and then import it into a new database. All right, so we'll do that next. Hey guys, real quick video. I just wanted to show you before we enter any data. Or do anything I just want to show you how to back up your database and I would suggest that when you create a big database and you create the schema always export it before you add any data just so you have that empty database in case you need to go back and restart or whatever um, so all you need to do is make sure you're you're on the you're in the database you want to back up all right so you would go to databases we want to back up our store database and all we need to do is go to export um, you could do quick that's absolutely fine but I just want to show you you do have some options here alright so you can choose to export single tables uh, whatever tables you want by default all of them are selected which is what we want but we could just say we, we want just the customers table we could just choose customers all right, but we're going to choose all of them. All right, so uh, there's a few different ways we could save it. We just want um, we want to save the output to a file. All right, and what we're doing is creating a MySQL dump. All right, <laughs> it sounds a little funny, but it's a dump file. It's a it's a database SQL dump file, and you can choose to save it as a file, or you can choose to just output it as text and you can copy it and paste it or whatever you want to do with it format um, we want as SQL but you can also uh, use a number of other formats JSON um, PDF PHP XML but we're gonna keep it as an SQL dump file okay format specific options you can choose um, display comments um, disable foreign key checks we don't really want to mess with any of this um, this part here is important. We want our structure and data, but you could just get the structure, all right, with no data, or you could just get the data. Um, but by default, structure and data is selected, and that's what we want. Down here, we have just object creation options. Um, if we want to drop tables, if um, what we want to happen, if say there's already a, a table there that we're trying to import. 
all right things like that um, truncate table not really important and this stuff we just leave um, and then we'll just click go and we'll save a file which will be called the name of your database and then dot SQL okay so let's say our database crashes it, it something happens to the hard drive or whatever so we set up a, a new um, web server and then we install PHP my admin and we want that database back so all we need to do is create a new database so we'll call this store 2 and create alright so we have an empty database called store 2 so we'll click on that and you can see uh, let's see where that file go to my desktop and let's just open this real quick so this is like I said called us SQL dump file and we just have a bunch of comments here with the the host the time the server version PHP things like that SQL mode you don't need to really pay attention to that but what we have here is basically um, MySQL queries okay and these are create queries we're creating tables and you could just as well type this into the, the console or the command line and it would create the table customers alright um, and then we're creating all the the columns or the fields along with it along with what type data type the characters and not null we didn't set any of our columns to null so it's gonna say not null the ID is auto increment and then they define the primary key at the bottom here um, which is the ID alright and then we have the engine which we talked about the default is inodb unless you specify something else and it just goes on to create these tables and fields alright so that's what this file is and what it does so all we need to do here is in our empty database we want to go to ex I'm sorry import and we want to click on choose file we'll choose that dump file and then we'll click go and you can see that our import has been successfully finished 16 queries have been executed which is in the file store SQL so if we go to store 2 we have an exact copy of the database of store alright so that's how you can import and export databases very easily